In 2017, Emmanuel Macron swept French traditional political parties aside as he led a new movement known as En Marche, or On the Move, all the way to the presidency. But just over halfway through Macron's presidential term, France doesn't seem to be on the move at all. Instead, it's been paralyzed by mass protests and workers' strikes opposed to the president's plan to reform the country's pension system. A recent transport strike was the longest in French history. And though the controversial pensions bill moved to France's parliament earlier this week, labor unions have vowed to continue opposing it on the streets. So, where will this standoff end? And is there a broader battle at play over the nature of the French welfare state? Joining me to discuss this is Roland Lescure, a member of parliament for President Macron's ruling party. He joins me now from Paris. Uh, Roland, there was this wave of optimism when President Macron, this supposedly pragmatic centrist, came to office. We're more than halfway through his first term. There have been these major protests. Things aren't exactly going to plan, are they? Well, they are and they aren't. You know, as you mentioned, we are on the move and we are keep on moving. We've changed France in lots of different ways for the last two and a half years, on training, on education, on university, on the labor market, and now on pension. And yes, on every one of those reforms, you always find someone in France who's going to oppose them. But on the whole, I think we're beginning to have results. Unemployment hasn't been as low as it is today for the last 11, 12 years. There's job creations, there's company creations, foreign direct investment is coming into France again. So there are moves, there are results, and there are resistance. And that's what we're trying to process. He's, you say you have results and you're doing well on the economic front in terms of unemployment, etc. And yet President Macron's approval rating is more than halved from 66% after he was elected uh, to 30% last month. That's embarrassing, isn't it? Well, it's not embarrassing when you compare it with pre previous presidents that were, were well lower in, in the midterm. I mean, we had European elections last year. And before we had them, that was in June, people thought he's very unpopular, people don't like him. When you look at the results of those elections, unfortunately, Madame Le Pen was well ahead. We were very close to her. And behind that, there was no one to be seen. So at the end of the day, when and if we ask French people to vote and not just reply a poll, I'm not sure the results will be as bad as they seem to be on the polls. Um, many would argue that your pensions reform, which I think turns 42 different pensions into one quote-unquote streamlined universal pension, a lot of your critics would argue that that will leave a lot of people in France worse off. What do you say to them? It's true to say that amongst the 42 pension system you are talking about, some of them, bus drivers, train drivers and a few of these, are probably going to be not as well off as they are today. That has to be said. But for instance, in France, 20% of women, they take their pension to make sure that it's a full pension age 67. After this pension, they'll be able to do it at 64. So it's, as always in France, people who are not very happy with the reform, we hear them very well. But people at the end of the day that are going to be happy with that reform, sorry, we haven't heard that much. It's not so, just pension yeah, reforms. Ahead. France has had a wave of protests in the past year or so. There were the yellow vests that the world watched protesting in, in Paris and other major cities. There were the doctors protesting. Firefighters have protested. And then you have this heavy-handed French police response where, until recently, they were using tear gas uh, containing TNT. Uh, according to one report, 325 protesters have been injured in the head. 25 have lost an eye and five have lost their hands. That's outrageous police brutality, isn't it? Well... For one, no one's happy with that situation. You know, I'd rather no person to be wounded and French people who've been doing it for decades, you know, to be able to demonstrate peacefully in the streets. But you have to understand that the nature of the demonstrations in France has changed dramatically. I was, you know, young in the 60s and 70s. I went demonstrating with my parents. It was a celebration. You, you know, go against the government, then you negotiate and you go home. In those demonstrations that you're alluding to, there's a lot of people that are actually attacking the very essence of democracy. They want to kind of turn the French state upside down. We've seen, you know, heads of our president on top of pikes being shown around in the streets. So I'm not saying that, you know, any police excessive violence shouldn't be condemned. And there's inquiries in those, in some of these incidents you're allowed to. What's your to, reaction when you hear that 25 people have lost an eye 
and five people have lost their hands. That's the kind of thing you might hear in some dictatorship, not in a modern Western democracy trying to deal with political protesters. Losing your hands? No, but a lot of policemen have been wounded too. I'm not happy with that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I wish it wasn't the case. But I'm not allow anyone to say that France is in any way close to any dictatorship. This is a free country. You can say whatever you want. You can demonstrate as much as you want, and you can go and on yet, strike. And yet your government has been heavily criticised by Human Rights Watch, by Amnesty International, which has talked about excessive use of force by the police, has demanded French authorities exercise restraint. Again, these are leading international human rights groups uh, that are telling a Western democracy, you need to exercise restraint in how you deal with your protesters. Yeah, and, you know, I hope these people have also come and seen what's happening in those demonstrations. I did. You know, I took off my suit, my tie, and I went in those demonstrations. And I can tell you, some of those people, and again, I'm not happy that a few of them have lost an eye on hand, but those people are it's insurrection. You know, they're, 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 they're violent. They're there to actually kick the police. And that's not what... A, peaceful, democratic demonstration should be about. When you say this is an insurrection, come on, this is France. Protesting in France is as French as anything else you can think of. As you said, you yourself went to protests, and let's be clear, there were violent protests in France in the 60s and 70s too. This idea that protests are somehow insurrectionary is a very odd claim to make from a French politician. No, it has changed dramatically. I can tell you, I've been in those. Some of these people, and I'm not talking about a lot of people, probably a few hundreds, but those people, I mean, they're wearing in their backpack, you know, weapons to actually go and kick the police. It's a very different way of demonstration that we had in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and the noughties. This is very recent. It's about five years old. People are not afraid of going to demonstrate. And I can tell you, it's not about Maybe they're violence. afraid of it's losing their hands. The people in those demonstrations that are there to actually make some, not just noise, but sound and furry and blood. That's completely unacceptable. So again, you know, the police is doing their job. And some of those acts of the police have probably gone too far. And this should be condemned. But we shouldn't turn the table. You know, the people who are starting that violence are the ones in the streets, me, not the ones that okay. are trying to protect the French people. Let me ask you this. President Macron is a former investment banker. Uh, who many see as a man trying to privatise or neoliberalise the French economy. Has this now become a battle for the soul of France, or at least the soul of the French economy? Is this now capitalism versus socialism in France? Well, I think that Emmanuel Macron is probably trying to put those two together, to, get, to keep the brighter side of capitalism, which is free enterprise, technology, innovation, wealth creation, while preserving that part of the French model that always has been more equalitarian, more redistributive than other models, including in Washington, where you sit. We've actually made, I say, a lot of casualties in the French political class, and those guys are trying to get back by characterizing us a bit, a bit like, as you said, you know, we are the Thatchers of the 21st century. We're not like that. In that pension reform, there's a lot of redistribution. We want to, for people in the suburbs, we want for people in the territories that haven't benefited from globalization to be put back in the system through education, through on-the-job training. We've never created in, you know, as many companies as we are now in France. We haven't attracted so much capital. In the meantime, we're keeping that redistributive model that France is okay. known for. So you're saying you're keeping the model you're known for. You're saying that Macron is not a Thatcher figure. But when you have the president comparing himself to the Roman god Jupiter, referring to demonstrators as, quote, slackers, cynics and extremists, and suggesting that they go get jobs instead of protesting, surely you can understand why his image has taken such a beating and why he does seem to be so anti-working class right now to many people. Yeah, well, I don't think he's anti-working class. He's anti, um, you know, insurrection. That's one part of what you said. On the working class part of the story, on the, you know, let's go and cross the street and, and, and find a job, he has recognized himself that those words were probably out of place. He's actually changed his tone. He's trying to, again, calm everybody down, pacify the country, and make sure everybody understands that no one not himself, not myself, not anyone in this government, is waking up in the morning thinking, how can I make the rich richer? It's all about changing the French model 
in order to preserve it, to make sure that the people, the outsiders of the French model, that have been excluded from education, jobs, pension, for the last 40 years are now put back in the game. And it's a fundamental change. It's not making people happy, mostly minorities. And just to be clear, you're a member of his party. Do you believe the president could be compared to the Roman god Jupiter? <laughs> I certainly don't. Yeah, he, he probably had a bit of a, say, what, poetic hearsay that day. But on the whole, he's very pragmatic, very human, very hardworking. Roland, one last question before I let you go. Given France's electoral system, which has these two rounds of voting, multiple candidates, uh, Macron was not the first choice uh, for the majority of French voters. Even those who voted for him in the second round, when he won a majority, did so in opposition to the only other option on the ballot paper, Marine Le Pen, uh, leader of the then National Front, now National Rally. You would recognize, surely, that you benefit from the fact that the only real alternative to you guys right now is the far right. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm sorry for that. I wish we had other oppositions, but the other oppositions are dead, or nearly so. So if they can get up, get their acts together, you know, whatever, be born again or find another way of opposing, I'd be very happy. I'd be much happier to be, you know, having a debate with democratic forces that are not racist, that are not protectionist, that are not looking back in the mirror to see if France was better 100 years ago. That's not what I have. I don't choose my opposition. I deal with the opposition I have, and unfortunately, it's Madame Le Pen. We're trying to make everything that she doesn't get into power to make sure that France is a better place, France is a more pacified place, France is a more unique and united place. I'm working on it day and night, and Emmanuel Macron, Jupiter or not, is doing it as well. Roland Lescure, thanks so much for joining me on Upfront. Thank you, Mehdi. That's our show. Upfront will be back next week.